Thanks again for joining us uh, for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show. Well, there's no uh, hazardous weather in the forecast, at least for tonight and tomorrow, so uh, the hazardous weather graphics uh, will bypass for today and move on to satellite imagery. And uh, still a huge ridge of high pressure out here over the uh, northern Bering Sea, extending southward there. See the easterly flow here on the coming around the uh, south side of the center pulling some mid and high level clouds here back to the west uh, along the uh, Alaska Peninsula, from the Alaska Peninsula on out toward the central Aleutians. Then you get into some uh, lower cloudiness out here farther to the west, but uh, any storminess is even way out there to the west toward Kamchatka Peninsula. See the uh, higher cloud shield with the frontal system that's uh, farther back to the west there to the Komodorskis, but uh, any rain producing clouds here are back from the Komodorskis out toward Kamchatka Peninsula. Otherwise, uh, a, couple of, a little bit of uh, light snow in a disturbance moving down from the northwest and across the uh, portions of the Arctic coast and the north slope, especially back here to the uh, west over the, uh, or I'm sorry, back to the east over the eastern north slope. Uh, a little bit more extensive area of uh, clouds and some light snow, but the interior mostly clouds, are mostly clear and continued cold here over the east, eastern interior. Otherwise, on the chart, here's that uh, weak system bringing some areas of light snow and the clouds down uh, mostly to the uh, eastern Arctic coast on over to uh, Mackenzie River Delta and then back along the uh, Brooks Range there and the North Slope, mostly north of the Brooks Range. Uh, maybe some flurries getting uh, into possibly the northwest coast there, Kivalina, but whatever it has is very light. Otherwise, uh, again, dry conditions, cold temperatures, generally below zero over the interior, coming a little above south of the uh, mountains here into south central Alaska. Picking up the uh, winds too, tightening gradient along the North Gulf Coast. Uh, picked up those uh, outflow winds through the channeled areas, Prince William Sound, Copper River Delta, and especially here over the northern panhandle, Lincoln Island Glacier Bay, so carrying uh, some gale force winds in there. And then this low center west of the Queen Charlotte Islands, main front uh, with uh, a breakaway low moving eastward there, that's what brought uh, the heavier precipitation over the southern areas uh, last evening and last night. Uh, lighter amounts today, still a southerly flow into the area there, so places like Unnet picking up about two-thirds of an inch of water, liquid precipitation since midnight, and uh, over toward Wrangell about a quarter of an inch. That mostly falling all the snow over toward Stewart and Hyder where the uh, warnings were originally out for, but that has all come down now with the main system pushing off to the east, and there are no warnings or advisories out for the uh, southeast coast currently. Far back to the north, uh, temperatures remain colder, and precipitation was much lighter, just a few hundredths of an inch water equivalent occurring today around the Juneau area, drying out back to the west there. Breezy conditions through the gap areas of the uh, coast range here along uh, from Yakutat again into northern Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay, and then diminishing back to the west here. Uh, some clouds and a few isolated snow showers, mostly off the coast here from the Gulf of Alaska, and trying to approach Kodiak Island, but then taking a turn to the south here in the flow. So dry with some sunshine there for Kodiak, the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, on up into uh, south central Alaska, and maybe some clouds and flurries here along the uh, Yukon Delta coast, mostly along and off the coast there. Very light amounts, uh, just lower flying conditions and nothing very significant at all. And again, some patchy fog around Tin City today and possible flurries up over the Chukchi Sea. Otherwise, we were looking at this uh, strong 1,035 millibar high center at the surface, a loft just a little bit farther to the east and dominating the entire Bering Sea and of course the northerly flow keeping it chilly over the interior of the state and that keeping all the storminess out to the west and directing it up and over the top of the ridge with uh, east northeasterly flow here from the uh, Bering Sea down into the Aleutians. So winds uh, not too bad and mostly dry conditions across uh, the entire area. Looking at the forecast for tonight, another uh, frontal boundary there tries to edge eastward 
but again, all the precipitation will stay over the Komodorskis and to the west and slide on up into Russia with that high center holding fast there right along the south coast of uh, the Russian Far East. This uh, northeast flow could uh, look for a little bit of an increase in the cloudiness here over the eastern Bering Sea with maybe some flurries showing up as well, possible uh, low clouds or a possible fog which would uh, reduce uh, flying conditions, say, from St. Paul on up to, to uh, St. Lawrence Island, but nothing very serious at all. Winds uh, on the light side, just barely a breeze here occurring over the Alaska Peninsula, especially compared to what was seen uh, late last week and on Saturday there. A little bit more of a breeze here up along the uh, Bristol Bay coastline, but uh, generally light winds and uh, fair skies across much of the interior tonight. Still looking at some lingering areas of light snow over the eastern Arctic coast and down toward the Brooks Range there, but nothing south of the mountains. There's clouds in the upper Yukon Valley zones. And then over here in the 40 mile country, especially toward North Toke, could see a little bit of uh, flurry conditions there due to the upslope nature of the wind flow here with the tight gradient along the Alaska Range and the Wrangles. And again, it's gonna stay quite windy uh, over the Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area as Arctic air continues to blow southward on that, on those rides southward on those winds. So it'll be dry and then you get into a chance of precipitation. Still a weak boundary right through here. But again, mostly all that precipitation off to the east with uh, rain or rain and snow mixed over the southern southeast coast. And again, the heaviest amounts will be down to the south. And uh, otherwise, Kodiak Island looking fair and mostly clear tonight. Looking ahead to tomorrow, that uh, pattern continues. May catch some clouds here along the eastern coast of Kodiak Island, but uh, Kenai Peninsula looking clear, as well as Cook Inlet, back into Bristol Bay. Virtually cloud-free here across much of the interior and still uh, carrying these lower clouds with some possible flurry conditions there uh, from the Wrangell Mountains up to the Nor Nabizna, Northway and Toke, and those areas and then on into Canada, otherwise north of there. Eagle looking really good, Tana Valley looking uh, dry and clear as well. North Slope though, high pressure settling in over the North Slope. That's gonna trap that uh, lower level moisture in place there. So look for some flurries, especially up uh, over the central and eastern North Slope on out to the eastern Arctic coast. A little bit better back to the west there, a little more offshore flow. So some variable clouds from Kivalina to uh, Cape Lisbon, and then should be mostly clear tomorrow for the uh, Seward Peninsula into St. Lawrence Island. Good VFR all along and off the southwest coast there with continued northeast winds and uh, picking up some clouds for the Perbolos, but again, not much change out here for the Bering Sea continued uh, fair and dry. High pressure retreating a little bit back to the north now, but generally the uh, main ridge is holding. And moving ahead to uh, Wednesday, still easterly flow across the Bering Sea, now a little farther north. That'll pick up some moisture and run the risk of increasing some uh, snow shower, rain or snow shower activity here over the western Aleutians. That's west of the Adak Atka area, just some variable clouds there. Still a risk of some afternoon sunshine, same thing for the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, in the interior, no change, clear and cold. And then uh, a trough might graze the central Arctic coast there with a few flurries and some clouds, and that's about it. High pressure, 1,046 millibar low. Up there uh, near Old Crow, that keeping the gradient tight here along the North Gulf Coast, so gusty gap winds there for northern, <coughs> excuse me, northern uh, Prince William Sound, and continuing in across the panhandle, this frontal boundary redeveloping, another one coming up, pressing northward, increasing snow right along the North Gulf Coast from roughly uh, Cordova, Cape Acataga, back in toward uh, definitely Kodiak Island. Looks like a snow day coming up for Wednesday and then just grazing the southern Kenai Peninsula areas and possibly sliding into Kachemak Bay. Otherwise, clouds, few flurries there for the Alaska Peninsula, and rain and snow pushes back in over the southern panhandle, again, colder and drier up to the north. Low temperatures uh, for tonight in that uh, 15 to 30 degree below zero range over the eastern interior, with uh, many areas somewhere in between to uh, five to uh, 15 below up along the central and eastern Arctic coast. A little milder here to the west, 10 to 15 for the Seward Peninsula, upper 20s for the Pribilofs, lower 30s for the Aleutians. And for the uh, Panhandle here, anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 in the north to lower 30s down toward the southwest coast. Highs for tomorrow afternoon, again below zero Copper River Basin, all the eastern interior right up to the Arctic coast, reaching uh, around 20 for Nome. And mid 20s, St. Lawrence Island, lower 30s for the Pribilofs, teens, south central Alaska, and uh, 
pushing up into the mid-30s along the uh, Prince of Wales Island area to Sitka, otherwise in the 20s to lower teens in the southeast area. And for the low temperatures for Wednesday morning, looking like this, again, quite cold, anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 below, central eastern interior, on up to the Arctic coast, a little milder, near zero here in the west over the inland areas to uh, teens, St. Lawrence Island, 20s for the Pribilofs, and uh, anywhere from uh, single numbers over the northern panhandle to uh, mid-20s down south and mid-20s for Kodiak Island and zero figures and teens for South Central Alaska. Highs coming up for Wednesday afternoon, uh, a little bit milder, but still staying below the zero mark there from the Copper River Basin, Tanana Valley, up to the eastern Arctic coast, and then single numbers here across the southwest and western interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First aviation graphic here showing uh, quite an area of IFR along and north of the Brooks Range, especially here on the east side, out across eastern Beaufort Sea coast with some VFR back along the central and western coast. And then south of the mountains, a lot better conditions, although uh, kind of a widespread area marginal with areas of IFR here over the eastern interior, right on down uh, to the eastern Alaska Range on the north side. VFR in the south and then IFR here getting quite close to the Yukon Delta coast on down but uh, northeast of the Pribilofs and then still along and north of the Alaska Peninsula and on Alaska Island and then better conditions out over the Aleutians and the Panhandle looking pretty good marginal VFR slipping up into the southern areas otherwise VFR and for the afternoon on Tuesday still uh, quite an extensive area of IFR here up over the uh, well, from the 40 mile country up across Yukon Flats into the central Brooks Range, you're actually just north of the crest of the ridge there, or the uh, mountains on out to the eastern Arctic coast. Good VFR, central west coast, all through the western interior, eastward across uh, south central Alaska, Kodiak Island, into Prince William Sound. And not much change out here, still IFR along and north of the Alaska Peninsula, back to about on Alaska Island, and then uh, IFR there from St. Matthew Island, just covering the Pribilofs in the afternoon. And then that retreats back to the west on Wednesday, or redevelops farther to the west on Wednesday here, with uh, VFR now covering all of the eastern and southeast bearing into Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, with marginal VFR north side of the Fox Islands, westward to Shimianat too. And we've got uh, good VFR over the interior, except this very persistent area up here over the northeast, which in the afternoon on Wednesday burns off uh, just about completely there, and we're left with some marginal VFR along the Kenai Peninsula south coast there, back into Kodiak Island. Just isolated IFR possible there on Fognac Island with marginal VFR on into the southern southeast coast and kind of angling back up along the eastern border. And for passes, Anatovic, IFR becoming marginal, gradual improvement, uh, lowest conditions in the morning, better in the afternoon for both passes, look for improving trend. And Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR once again, same forecast for rainy, good uh, flying conditions there, signaling visibility is unlimited for windy. And uh, Isabel, VFR, Mentasta, also VFR, as well as Tanita, another VFR day there, as will be for Portage. And then Chilkoot and White, good VFR. Freezing levels uh, at the surface here over all interior Alaska, on down until you get to about uh, Dixon Entrance there, Prince of Wales Island around Heidelberg, say, 2,000 feet. And then a uh, big upper level ridge out here, that southerly flow for days pulling warm air up. We got 8,000 feet here from the northwest bearing in across the Russian Far East. Four to six out or four thousand feet down to the Pribilofs, and that uh, icing none expected out there. Really, no storminess or really any significant moisture at all, except up here over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, back in toward the uh, across the west, eastern North Slope. Uh, could be some areas of uh, light to very isolated moderate rime icing up there uh, below above about 3,000 feet and also down here this area kind of slipping east southeast throughout the day so these uh, chances will be greatest in the morning hours in the central panhandle and then I'll be slipping southeastward and improving in the afternoon but not until the evening here for the southern southeast coast and then for the uh, jet stream uh, for tomorrow Still strong areas, a tremendous ridge covering the Bering Sea out here, right up into the Arctic, diverting the jet stream south to north, then north to south here, 80 to 100 knots, uh, coming well south of the uh, our forecast zones here and right into the Pacific Northwest out of these. One branch angling up and crossing the uh, Queen Charlotte, so really not affecting the southeast coast too much, or uh, gradual improvement down there throughout the day. And for 9,000 feet, we've got uh, northeasterly winds here, starting out about 25 to 35 as they hit the Arctic coast up there, picking up from uh, to 30 to 50 knots here as they uh, head southwest across the interior along the southwest coast, 45 to 50 knot winds there. 
again at 8,000 or 9,000 feet here, down across the Alaska Peninsula, 30 to 35 knots, Kodiak Island up across Cook Inlet, much lighter Prince William Sound, southeast interior areas, not too bad over the panhandle, pretty light winds under a weak trough, strong high pressure over the northwest Bering Sea, east release 25 to 35 for the Aleutians, 9,000 or 3,000 feet. Good northeast winds here continue for another day, 25 to 40 knots here right on down to the southwest coast, 25 to 35 southeast bearing eastern Aleutians, turning east for the central Aleutians, lighter here over the southeast interior areas, but still uh, looking 25 knots, Cook Inlet down to Kodiak Island, weak low in the Gulf of Alaska, really not much of a wind producer there, as is the one over the southern southeast coast, with the gradient with that down to the south. As a result, Looks pretty smooth there for the Panhandle, all the way up to uh, Cape Yakutaga, and then quite a few areas of moderate turbulence here over the southwest and south central Alaska areas uh, through the afternoon. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us today is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thank you for joining us, Eric. My and pleasure, Dave. Thank you. And uh, t you're joining us here to talk a little bit more about satellites and how satellites work, and especially one neat feature that's working over Alaska right now. What is that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, a lot of weather satellites and a lot of instruments on mm -hmm. these satellites, and there are new generations going up and new instruments. This includes something called the day-night band, okay. which is not a cover band at the local bar, yeah. but it's a new satellite that is very useful, especially here in Alaska, especially in the winter. In the winter time, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes it a little bit hard to use some of the normal tools that we associate with uh, weather satellite imagery. Right. You know, one of the classic weather satellite instruments is just visible light. What mm -hmm. would the human eye see if you were riding on a weather satellite yourself yeah. and looked down, and it was black and white? you'd see uh, the clouds reflecting the sunlight. And we've got mm -hmm. an example from the Pacific Ocean. There's a geostationary satellite. And we can see that the eastern side of the image is uh, in daylight. The western side, it's night over there, so mm -hmm. you don't see anything because there's no sunlight over there. Right. And visible imagery, it's very intuitive. You see the clouds just like you see them right. um, standing on the ground, but now you're a satellite seeing them from above. But the problem is, what about the night side of okay. the planet? How do you track the storms? How do you know where the rain is, the snow, the, the weather, mm -hmm. if you can't see the clouds? And that's why, just like a television can change from one channel to another, or a radio can change stations, mm -hmm. satellites can change the frequency of the electromagnetic spectrum okay. that they're looking at. Uh -huh. We can go to infrared instead of visible light. You know, it's heat energy. You can see heat, and we've okay. got another satellite picture from the same time, same satellite, mm -hmm. out over the Pacific Ocean. That's the infrared side. Okay. and we're seeing temperature there. And even at night, when there's no light, everything still has a temperature. So we're sensing something with a thermometer instead of uh, perhaps the, the visible side of that, is what you're saying? That's right. Okay. Um, okay. On this depiction, colder features are, are lighter shades, mm -hmm. warmer features are dark. And so clouds tend to be colder than the ground. Clouds are higher in the atmosphere, it's cooler. Oh, okay. And so that very same image on the western or the left-hand side, of the, the globe, now we can see the clouds there, even though it's nighttime, because we're seeing the temperatures. Mm -hmm. And one nice feature is that tropical storm there, um, just in the middle of the, the northern hemisphere there, high, uh, hurricane or typhoon, That's depending That's that on swirly your, part that we see in the middle of the image? There you go, you okay. can even see the eye on yeah, it there, okay. especially in the infrared image. So, we've got two kinds of imagery there from the same satellite, different instruments, you know, different channels, like on a television, mm -hmm. visible and infrared. You know, it turns out, there's no one magic tool uh, each has its strengths, each has its flaws, mm -hmm. weaknesses. The visible is nice, it's intuitive, it's easier sure, to understand, sure. but doesn't work at night. Okay. Infrared is nice, it, it works at night, mm -hmm. you can see temperatures, but there is a catch. What if your clouds and the nearby bare ground or mm -hmm. open water, what if those were about the same temperature? Oh, that's going to be hard to figure out what's going on. If you can only yeah. see temperature and you have two features mm -hmm. that are the same temperature, they will they will look the same. You, you won't be able to tell. They're camouflaged. This happens, especially, it can happen around Alaska, mm -hmm. especially over the ocean when you have low clouds that are the same temperature as the open water. That happens quite a bit in Alaska. Yeah. We have an example. Now, okay. this is from a different geostationary satellite. It's down over the Atlantic Ocean. Look in the South mm -hmm. Atlantic. In infrared, we've highlighted in a yellow circle there, um, there's uh, some patches of clouds, but it looks like there's a clear area in the middle of that oh, image. Sure. Yep. That's the infrared look. But let's take a look at the, the visible channel. 
and we can see there's a stripe of clouds across the oh. middle of that circle that is only visible yeah. in the visible. Okay, right. The, the trick here is that those are low clouds of about the same temperature as the surrounding ocean. Mm -hmm. So from an infrared point of view, where you're seeing temperature, mm -hmm. the clouds and the water nearby are the same temperature, they look the same. It's only on the visible that you can see what stands out as the actual imagery. Okay. Two tools, each have their strengths and weaknesses. Can we combine them? That's where the day-night band comes in. Oh, okay. It's a super sensitive visible sensor mm -hmm. that can actually see by moonlight. It, it can even see the aurora. Wow. And in Alaska, huh. at, we have long winter nights. Mm -hmm. um, we can use that day-night band. Here's an example from that storm that, that blew the Kulik drilling platform ashore near Kodiak Island okay. in uh, December back in 2012, mm -hmm. this image is right near when that storm happened and it's in the middle of the night in December. Now this looks it like visible imagery. Looks like daytime imagery, it's oh. amazing. That sensor can take any little bit of moonlight and just make the most of it. We I can see that. so much detail. Even in the northern part of the image there, you can see some aurora up there, the northern lights. That's that are, band that goes across the, the Arctic slope? You got it, slope? that's the northern lights. We're seeing black and white image here yeah. so you don't get the green or the, the purple colors there. That? But that is the aurora. There's another example of the day-night band, and this is from January of uh, 2013. It's about four in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a snapshot from Weather Service software. And we can even see in the middle of the image, there's the, the lights of uh, Fairbanks and North Pole over to Isleson Air Force Base. Uh, Anchorage and Matsu lights, city lights are evident as well. Sure we can see, even though it's four in the morning in January, there is no sunlight to be had that just enough moonlight is available that this sensor can see that. So we're, we're trying to solve that puzzle, puzzle where visible light is good, but only during the daytime. IR is good at night, but okay. you, you can't see the difference between clouds and ground sometime. Right. The day-night band is an attempt to do the best of both with one tool. And it's brand new for Alaska here, and uh, we're hoping to use it in the forecast process um, and help predict storms, weather patterns, to, to help get good forecasts for people. Okay, another uh, tool in the weather toolkit for uh, meteorologists in Alaska and researchers worldwide. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. And you can learn more about GINA and the day-night band by going to the web address that you see on your screen. For Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, finished uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, still, you can see an expansion southwestward here along the southwest coast and to a lesser extent in Bristol Bay and continuing to spread eastward here, starting to uh, edge in towards St. Matthew Island. And that's going to continue here for the next uh, four or five days, especially up here over the northern areas with uh, east or east northeasterly flow in the forecast uh, through much of this week. By the late, late this week, we may start to see some milder air push into the southern areas here uh, for Bristol Bay, maybe to the uh, Pribilofs, but that's just a chance at this point. Moving on to the marine forecast here uh, for tonight and at least part of the day tomorrow early on, storm warnings out for northern Lincoln Canal, heavy freezing spray warnings. Gale, Stevens Passage, down to 15 knots for Clarence Strait. Northwest, uh, 25 to 30 knots here in the south coast, seas 15 to 18 feet, and east, northeast at uh, 25 to 30 on the north coast with uh, seas lower. And then for Wednesday, gales out of the east here for the north coast, minimum gales, 35 knots, 10 foot seas, and then east uh, 30 knots, turn south 20 there on the south coast there, Prince of Wales Island, seas at about 10 feet, light southeasterlies continued around 15 for Clarence Strait, and north winds at 30 knots for Stevens Passage, and then winds uh, probably coming down tomorrow afternoon, uh, for Northern Glacier Bay through tomorrow night and then tending to edge back upwards to 45 knots on Wednesday with 10 foot seas. Prince William Sound, north 25, higher gusts out of northern bays and uh, northeast 30 for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast to uh, down to 20 here for the western coast and then back up to 30 northerly, not, northerly 30 knot winds, the Barren Islands in across Kachemak Bay, northeast 30 for Southern Cook Inlet. Small craft advisories here north side, north of the Forelands with 25 knot winds. That holds through Wednesday, north 25. Increase here, 40 knots south of the Forelands, right into Kachemak Bay out of the northeast. 35 knot minimum gale here for the uh, Barren Islands, western North Gulf Coast, and northeast 30 with 10 foot seas and 25 knots in for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, northerlies. 25 to 30 knots with seas uh, 9 to 8 feet. Sitkanak to uh, K 
Cape Surichev, north, 25 to 30 knots, strongest winds here in the west, and small craft advisories on the north, <coughs> on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, right on up into Bristol Bay. And then for Wednesday, those turn northeasterly at 25 for Bristol Bay, pick up the 30 knots here, uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, Cape Surichev to Sitkanak, northeast, that entire uh, zone there, at 25 knots from the northeast with seas 8 feet. Kodiak Island, east 25, but Chillicoff Strait, northeasterly, 40 knots, seas building to 15 feet. Out over the Fox Islands, uh, tomorrow here, northerly, 25 to 30 knots there with uh, seas around 10 to 11 feet. And for the central areas, northeast 28, Akhenatka, all the way out to Kiska, turning east at 20 from Kiska to Shimia. And then for Wednesday, from uh, Shimia to uh, Kiska again, maybe Amchitka, east at 20, turning northeast 25 from Amchitka, all the way across to Alaska Island, but uh, looking at more 30 knot in the 30 knot range here with seas anywhere from 8 to 15 feet. And then for the southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, that's where the winds will be the strongest tomorrow. Northerly is at 30 knots, 5 foot seas. And then uh, north 20, north side of uh, Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence there, and the Bering Strait, about 20 knots, 15 for St. Matthew Island, north 20 for the Perloffs with 6 foot seas. And then for uh, Wednesday, an increase here. Northeast 30, 13 foot seas for St. Paul, St. George zones. Northeast 25 there for the northern Bering Sea, 25 to 30 knot winds here for the southwest coast. But uh, not much of an increase, northeast 15 for St. Lawrence Island. And for the uh, area from Wales on up to uh, Cape Thompson, north 15, and then Cape Thompson on, it's northeast at 10 to 15 knots. Not too bad. Back around to the north for the uh, central and east side. But the uh, far eastern zone, west at 15 tomorrow, and then for Wednesday, those fall down to about 10 knots, and then kind of a light variable offshore drift here for the, much of the uh, Arctic coast. And uh, Cape Thompson on down south to southeast, only at about 10 knots, so a real light wind day coming up for those zones. And then for tonight, uh, looking at chance of snow lingering here, lowest flying conditions, maybe some fog, flurries, uh, mostly on the east side, better back to the west. No change over the interior. Channel gusty gap winds along the coast range and the north Gulf Coast. And again, the storm warnings out through tonight for uh, northern Lynn Canal. And uh, mixture precipitation down here with the southern areas in conjunction with this system, which moves uh, slowly eastward. Bulk of the moisture already out, but the low lingering back to the west. That's going to keep a chance of rain and snow shower central and southern areas. Fair and cold over the interior. Again, chance of snow reaches the northern Gulf Coast in the afternoon on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>